This is Wilson? Yes. I work at the racetrack with your husband. There's been an accident. They want you to come right over. An accident? What happened? Is Joe hurt bad? Well, I don't know. I didn't see it happen. They just told me to come right over and get you. Yes. Yes. Please take me to him. We're hurrying to get to the racetrack, officer. My husband's had an accident. Racetrack? That's on Highway 7. You're going the wrong direction. Oh, yeah? Why, must have taken the wrong turn somewhere. May I see your driver's license, please? Sure. I, uh, seem to have forgot it, officer. Please hurry, officer. Then let's see the registration. Well, I, I don't have any. The car belongs to the track. Every man in the department is pulling for your husband to come through. Thank you, Captain. Dr. Falkenberg. Dr. Falkenberg. Any news, Lieutenant? He's been in there at least two hours. What a way to get it. We did everything we could, Mrs. Becker. I'm sorry. Just before he died, he mumbled something about a racetrack. Racetrack? Yes. That's all we could understand. I certainly hope you'd catch the maniac that did this. So do we, Doctor. Any leads at all? One. Wally Dakins, a hood they call a blaster, escaped from a prison down south a week ago. He uses a sawed-off shotgun. The Blaster and Frenchie Malloy used to work together. Served a term for armed robbery. We'll pick up Malloy. Wouldn't do any good. No way we could tie him in. Headquarters wants it done another way. They brought in an undercover officer. Brought one in? He's a top man. Maybe the best. Well, who is he? Only headquarters knows his identity. When they get word from him, we move. Assigned undercover. Living like a hood to catch hoods. Sometimes you want to tear them apart the way I felt about the one who had killed Officer Becker. But I can't operate that way. I've got to make them think I'm more crooked than they are. I had to reach Frenchy Malloy. He was the link to the blaster. I didn't have much to go on. Just two words spoken by the officer before he died. Racetrack. No, we're not going to hurt your wife, Wilson. All we want is your cooperation. But is she all right? She's all right. You can take my word for it. Oh, I, I, I was worried sick when I got home. The children hadn't been fed. I, I was just about to phone the police when you came. Now, that's a silly idea, isn't it? You won't have any more silly ideas like that, will you? I'll do anything you say. Only please don't hurt my wife. All right. Now, here's a layout of the trap. You know what getaway day is. It's the last day of the racing meeting. That's right, the day you're going to cooperate. Or you'll never see your wife alive. A hangout of Frenchie Malloy's hoods was Eddie's pool room. I'd been visiting there the last few nights, making the right impression with Eddie. Is that the guy that has the fat mic? Yeah, took him for 200. Why don't you throw him out of here? He pays for his racks. Besides, fat Mike started the betting. 
Andy, look, a hustler like that gives a place a bad reputation. If I was you, I'd bounce him. But you ain't me. Sammy Dawson started the Welsh on a game the other night. When this guy got through with him, I thought I'd have to call an ambulance. Rough boy, huh? I wouldn't like to tangle with him. What's he go by? Smith. That took a lot of thinking. Yeah. Soft clothes coming in. Get the dough off the tables. Get the dough off the tables. What's the hurry, Smiley? Oh, you got nothing on me, copper. Okay. Why don't you keep your paws off of me? I'm clean. Good. Stay that way. What's the beat, family? We got a tip. There's a lot of heavy gambling going on in here. In my place? <laughs> you got a wrong steer. Once in a while, the boys play for a round of drinks. That's all. Uh -huh. Next time we close you up, we'll make it stick. Talk to my lawyer. Yeah. Lousy coppers. Looking for this? I'll take that. You'll take it. <laughs> Stop trying to be a comic. You saw me stash you when the fuzz broke in. Give. Yeah, I saw you. So what? You're in no position to be given the orders, friend. I'll make you a shot. <laughs> All right, now let's have the dough. The dough. You didn't drop the last ball, bud. I just did. Give. Thanks for the donation, boys. That's a real sweet character. Now that I had the reputation I wanted, I was ready to move into Frenchy Malloy's backyard. Malloy was an ex-con who ran a nightclub as a legitimate front. It catered to some of the best people and some of the worst. Who's the Finch? Belongs to the boss. He's got good taste. So have I. Mind if I sit down? You must be new around here. Nobody ever sits with me. Unsocial. Let's say I'm in quarantine. You know, if I were guessing, I'd guess you were a model or uh, maybe a showgirl. You guessed good. I've done a little of both. How did you know? It's obvious. A girl with your looks, a figure like yours. Well, don't let me stop you. Go on. Are you working right now? Uh, put it this way. I'm on a long vacation. Ah, that's a waste of talent. Mind if I make a suggestion? Try it for size. I have some friends who are associated with a television company. You know, you'd look great on their commercials. Oh, slow down, Buster. You're going to orbit. No, really, I'm on the level. Would you be interested? You know, I think you really mean it. Sure, I might be interested. Well, what do you say we duck out of here and uh, talk about it? Not tonight. I'm waiting for someone. As a matter of fact, I'm always waiting for him. Why don't you let him wait for you? No, Frenchie's got a very bad temper. Some other time. Mr. Malloy's on his way in. I have to go. I'll talk to those friends of mine. Will you be here tomorrow night? I'll be here. I'm here every night. You want some advice? They yeah, like what? Lay off. Keep the change. Paging Mr. Davis, Mr. Lewis Davis. Hi. Paging Mr. Davis. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Hello, beautiful. Make up your mind yet about having dinner with me? I talked to my boyfriend about that. He doesn't believe in sharing the wealth. Uh, smart boyfriend. You know, as soon as my line comes in from the coast, I've got a couple dresses I'd like you to slip on. Oh, you'd look great in them. Your line is coming in real good, mister. I'll uh, keep in touch. You're a real hot shot with the girls, aren't you, Mr. Smith? Just who are you? What's on your mind? You tried to pick up a dame last night at the Tampico Club. Oh, you boys must be from the Ladies' Aid Society. Don't get wise. A friend of ours didn't like it. 
Now, you look like a nice, healthy boy, and if you want to stay that way, lay off that dame. I'll think it over. You've thought it over, pal. Don't push your luck. Thanks for the advice. That pup needs a working over. Yeah. I just can't understand why those friends of mine haven't shown up yet. They were awfully eager to meet you. Oh, give them a chance. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I understand uh, your boyfriend spends a lot of time at the track. Oh, you can say that again. Been there every day for the past two weeks. How did you know? Uh, say, are you sure you're going to have time to do this television work? If there's one thing I've got, it's time. You know, I'm alone so much I've started to talk to myself. Your boyfriend must be a big better. Frenchie? Never bet on a horse race in his life. Well, I guess he just likes to watch the ponies run, huh? That's a laugh. I'm talking too much. Just, just forget I mentioned it, hmm? It's forgotten. Now, why don't you let me take you home? Why not? I'm sick and tired of being stood up. Let's get out of here. Good girl. That boss of yours must have a lot going for him. What's she been shooting her mouth off about now? The track must be awfully interesting to win out over a dish like her. Hiya, Mr. Smith. Make yourselves at home. We will. Frisk him. You won't listen to good advice, will you? We told you to stay away from that dame, Lucille. He's clean. Yeah, well, I'll make it a federal case. Just bought a few drinks. Yeah? She's the wrong gal, pal. You're a nosy person, aren't you? Put your coat on. You're going to take a little ride. Where? Frenchie Malloy wants a few words with you. I always wake up in a bad humor when I don't get my proper sleep. Blow. I told you this punk was aching for working over Danny. Over against the wall. Put your hands on it. Now this ought to put you in real solid with Malloy. I'll probably give you a raise. Now let's take that ride. And what is this? You should know better than to send boys out to do a man's job. Keep it up, wise guy. Just keep it up. You throw your muscle around pretty good. Yeah, we all have our days. Lucille. I, uh, I didn't tell him anything, Frenchie. Honest, I didn't. Tell him I didn't say anything. Keep quiet. Like the lady says, she didn't tell me a thing. I know better. She gets a loose mouth when she drinks. She talks too much. He was just telling me about a television job, that's all. Television job? Him? Why, you get more stupid every day. Take her home. You and your television friends. Oh, nice layout you've got. I call it home. Drink? Yes, yeah, scotch. Straight. Well, Smitty, like I tell the girls in my club, I hope you work as well as you audition. The only act I do is strictly solo. You just change your act. Maybe Lucille told you too much, maybe she didn't. I'm gonna play it safe. You're in on the caper, just so we both know where we stand. No choice, no discussion, you're in. Or else you'll be taken care of. By those punks? No. You ever hear of the blaster? Wally Dakins? He's been with us. Would you like to take him on? You know, I just changed my act. All right. You're in for 10% like everyone else. Except myself, naturally. Naturally? 10% of half a million isn't hard to take. Not hard at all. What's the mark? The racetrack. We dump it on getaway day next Saturday, while the seventh race is being run. That's pretty rough. That place is crawling with guards. 
That's why we hit it right at the start of the race, right on the second. We got a man working inside. Everything's been clocked. How solid is your man on the inside? It's solid. We snatched his wife. We got her on ice. Looks like you've got all the angles covered. What are the drawings? You and the boys meet inside at one of the two dollar windows just before the start of the seventh race. You and the blaster work as ice men. Danny and Spiney collect the money. Our wheel man waits in an ambulance outside a tunnel. Here's the layout of the track. You're going to be all right, Smitty. I get a feeling you're my kind of guy. Still walking the tightrope. I don't even know who the woman is or if she's still alive. Malloy would kill his own mother for a half a million dollars. So I know the chance an innocent housewife would have. And the blaster, he hadn't shown yet. I just had to wait for Malloy to make his move. Who is it? Me, Danny. Yeah, I never saw a guy so jumpy. Always pushing that iron in somebody's face. You must be so hot you're steaming. Hey, what's the story on you anyway, pal? Are you writing a book or something? Malloy's called a meeting for tonight. He wants you there. Tell him I've got a date. Listen, wise mouth. You're in hard with Malloy now, but don't rile him. This is an important meeting, some new developments. Now, you want me to tell him you're not interested? Must be your charm that wins me over. Be right with you. Hi, beautiful. The answer is still no, Mr. Smith. You know, you're giving me an inferiority complex. It's only fair to tell you. My boyfriend used to box at college. Good, we'll take him along for protection. How about Saturday night? <laughs> you know, it's a good thing I've got a strong will. If I will get you ten, I'd break her down. Don't you ever turn it off? The ambulance will be here by this tunnel. This is the cash room where the clerks deposit the dough after each race. A guard lets them in. That guard is our inside man, Wilson. Sounds solid enough. You got two minutes to pull it off. I've been over it a hundred times. I was even out the track today and clocked it. But I'm still not satisfied. We're gonna have a dry run, a rehearsal. We'll make it without the blaster and without the ambulance. Well, we all know where we fit in the heist. Why take a chance on any heat spotting us? I'm not gonna take any chances of blowing a half million bucks because of a slip up or making a dry run. What about the woman? What about her? Snatch of the dame's a pretty rough rap, I'd like to know, for cover. Don't let her keep you awake, Smitty. She's on ice. And I have other plans for her when the caper is finished. Good enough. Where do we meet? Danny will pick you up at the hotel in the morning. Anything else? Not a thing. See you in the morning. You know, I can't take that guy. You can't take anybody with brains. And he's got brains. Danny drove me to a shack about 10 miles outside of town. The road we took was the same one on which the motorcycle officer had been hit with a shotgun blast. Things were beginning to add up. The kidnapped woman was being held here. And guarding her was none other than the blaster. Somehow the motorcycle officer must have stumbled onto the kidnapping. And paid for it with his life. I'll see you around. Where are you going? What, are you writing a book or something? Sit down, Smitty. Have some coffee? No, thanks. Get back inside, dear. Where does that lead to? It's a bedroom. She can't get out. It's boarded up. So you're the blaster, huh? Your artillery? Don't you ever put your hand on that again. You hear me? Relax, pal. I was just admiring the tool of an artist. You don't meet many boys with your kind of a reputation. You know, you got something there. You don't find no specialists nowadays. Guys like Red Finley, remember him? Who doesn't? Oh, he's a top man with a machine gun. Tops. The Dalsy cops killed Red, but he took two of them with him. I hate cops. They stink. Woman. Get him some coffee. Have you seen one of these go off? You want to see it, huh? Take your head right off your shoulder. All I have to do is pull this trigger. Why don't you stop riding her? You watch your mouth, you hear me? Watch it. 
Get back inside. Mrs. Wilson and I were in the company of a madman. One twist of that warped brain and he could kill us both. He needed no rhyme or reason for killing. He got a sadistic enjoyment out of taking human life. He didn't need much pushing to brag about his exploits. He talked about that shotgun as if it were human, and fondled it as you would a baby. Then he started talking about the killing of Patrolman Becker. As I listened, I wanted to break him in half. Hey, they brought the meat wagon. We do the heist today. Oh, you're full of surprises. Got any objections? No, no, no objections. Why the switch? Well, just in case that guy Wilson got milk in his veins and tipped the cops about Saturday. All right, you stay here with the dame. We'll get rid of her when we get back. Let's go. They pulled a switch on me. They had me in a bind. The seventh race was about to start. But the day was Thursday instead of Saturday. And I hadn't contacted headquarters. When the horses broke from that gate, the caper started. Malloy had it well clocked. The race was only seconds old. Just inside that door was half a million dollars. When Wilson saw us, he almost fell apart. For a moment, I thought he wasn't going to open that door. But he went through with it. Everything was clicking right on schedule. Malloy's orders were no shooting. But when you've got a trigger-happy ape like the blaster along, anything could happen. They were getting away with it. In a matter of seconds, we'd be out of there. The alarm button was just beside Wilson. I had to do something to make him sound that alarm. Don't try anything or you'll get it just like your wife did. You'll get it just like she did, right between the eyes. My wife? You killed my wife? Hey, get out of here! took the blaster out of action. Danny and Smiley started shooting. The track guards returned the fire. Danny caught one and that was enough for Smiley. In the excitement, one man escaped. Me. Come on, murder and kidnapping. In here, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, thank God you're safe. Lieutenant Jackson will take you to the district attorney. We want you to tell him everything you've told us. We certainly will, Captain. Oh, a man that got away. He made a big mistake. Trying to threaten me by saying they killed my wife. Instead of frightening me, he gave me the courage to sound the alarm. The important thing is, you're both safe. The city is asleep, waiting for the coming day. It looks peaceful, doesn't it? But lurking in the shadows are other Malloys, other blasters. You find them in every city. And that's where my job takes me. Any city, wherever they are. It's a job that's got to be done. But one slip and you're through. Because you're always walking that tightrope.